folks, Joseph Isabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, mostly because just recently we just lost our Chihuahua dog named Tintin. We had her since uh, March of 2007. It's been a long time. She was getting old. And, you know, she had some trouble breathing and getting all these rashes. And sadly, she, I knew she was getting really sick. And she was going to live this long. So now we have a new puppy that's a mix between a Jack Russell Terrier and a Beagle. Almost looks a little bit like Snoopy that has black and white fur with a mix of brown. And her name is Lucinda. A very cute puppy. You know, running around, sometimes biting. She just played around. You know, she's, she's very cute. I actually post the pictures of what she looked like on Facebook, so now you'll probably see what she looked like. But anyway, I'm, I'm glad she's doing great. However, I'm going to do a new movie review, because it just premiered yesterday on Netflix, the streaming service that plays movies and TV shows, but also known for renting movies on DVD and Blu-ray, called Pee-wee's Big Holiday. It's a new Pee Wee Herman film that's basically a take on Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's actually a third sequel since we had uh, not only Pee Wee's Big Adventure but we also have Big Top Pee Wee. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of Pee Wee trying to find his stolen bike as well as becoming a trapeze artist at a local circus, he now goes cross country to a celebrity's birthday party in New York City. So, <laughs> what are the odds here? But I'm going to give you a brief history behind the character because I always had grew up uh, watching Pee Wee Herman when I was like very little. I used to watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure ever since it aired on TV. I believe I watched it on Select TV, HBO, Cinemax. And on home video. And I, I later taped it though. It was one of Tim Burton's first theatrical films because he was doing shorts for Disney at the time. So it was interesting that he got to work with Paul Wubens because later on he went on to work together with him in some of his films like Batman Returns. You know, he had an appearance and did some voice acting in The Nightmare Before Christmas. So there you go. But Pee Wee Herman was an 80's icon. He started out doing his stand-up back sometime in the 70's before he winds up having his first televised show on HBO called The Pee Wee Herman Show. Which is basically a take on children's shows on local television like Sheriff John, uh, Bozo the Clown, Popeye with Tom Haddon that aired on KTLA, as well as uh, Romper Room. So Howdy Doody, yeah, Howdy Doody was another one. So yeah, this mostly because since he he did grow up uh, watching all these uh, tro children's shows that aired in the mornings and afternoons or so, he wanted to play in a character that's very similar to it. So he thought, why not? He just comes up with all of his wacky humor, you know, because he has his own place, his playhouse, where he just hangs out with all the characters, doing all, all the crazy stuff. Going out with some wild adventures. <laughs> well, it was so popular, I mean, geared towards kids and adults, but it definitely had adult humor in there, that he wanted to become very famous. He went on to appear in several TV shows and movies, such as uh, Back to the Beach and several others. That now he finally had his first theatrical film, which was definitely one of the best films ever made back in 1985. That was 30 years ago. And yeah. And also he had his TV show called Peavy's Playhouse that aired on CBS during Saturday mornings that I used to watch when I was a kid. Yeah, along with my brother because we used to like watch a lot of shows on CBS 
besides Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Muppet Babies, uh, Looney Tunes, and even the, all the other shows that aired, such as uh, Hey Burn is Ernest. Uh, yeah, Pee Wee's Playhouse had played um, during Saturday mornings, and you know we just hang out watching it, so it was cool. You know, seeing Pee Wee coming up with his own adventures, you know, hanging out with characters. Um, I know it also introduces us to uh, Lawrence Fishburne playing the cowboy, and Phil Hartman. He continued to go on playing the role until sometime in 1991. When he got arrested at a local adult theater for masturbating, he had decent exposure. So he hasn't been doing anything until he got out of jail, continued to do some movies, you know, trying to get rid of his image until he decided that after all these years he wanted to make a comeback. So he did his HBO show, which is Basically, sort of a, a remake of the 1981 film, of the 1981 show, uh, the Pee Wee Herman show, on Broadway. And now, he finally got his new movie that's on Netflix. So there you go. <laughs> so let's get to the film. It stars Paul Rubens as Pee Wee Herman, along with Joe McInerno, best known for his TV show True Blood that aired on HBO, along with Tara Buck, also from True Blood. Jessica Pauly, Stephanie Beatrice, Aliyah Shawkat, Hal Landon Jr. from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Brian Palermo, and Richard Rill. It's produced by Judd Apatel, along with Paul Rubens, who co-wrote the film with Paul Rust, who's in the film, and it's directed by John Lee. The movie began set in the hometown of Fairview. Pee Wee Herman, who's played by Paul Rubens, was just about to have a dream that he was with his alien girlfriend, who's about to set off back to her planet on a spaceship, leaving Pee Wee behind because he decided to stay even though he didn't want to. Then he woke up, already out of bed, just getting ready to go to work at Dan's Diner. You know, just so he can make some breakfast for the, all the customers. While driving in a tiny red sports car and then the skateboard. While bumping into Mrs. Rose who just gave him some root beer barrels. You know, those tiny candies. Where he just drinks with a straw, a small straw. After that, he went to the library just to return a book until suddenly Emily arrives and asking Pee Wee to, to go out you know, since she's in love with him but he refuses and then after the diner he soon found out that his band the Renegades had broken up and decided not to bring Pee Wee around during its next tour so he tear the picture apart and decided to go on without him. Not to deal with them anymore. So now he's working shifts at the diner since Dan, who's played by Richard Real, decided to take a break. So now, all of a sudden, an actor named Joe McInerno, playing himself, just showed up in his motorcycle and orders himself a chocolate milkshake and he also brings him some root beer barrels to drink <laughs> well, anyway Joe decided to invite Pee Wee to go to his birthday party that's in New York which is in five days so he figures that maybe he can go cross country or maybe take a plane well that's when Pee Wee decided to take his big holiday all the way from Fairview to New York City going head east so after um, he was starting to show all of his models that he created the whole entire town especially showing uh, Joe the treehouse that he has that he once had and, and he just doesn't have it anymore after that he finally uh, took a trip 
by driving in his car till suddenly three hot female bank robbers had kidnapped him and tied him up at a local hotel room. It's Pepper along with Freckles and Bella nicknamed Pee Wee. <laughs> so they're just spending time, you know, having a pillow fight with uh, the cops or basically just male strippers and then once he escapes since the bank robbers have stole his car he bumps into a salesman who just sells nothing but gags such as a styrofoam cup magnet and a grocery bag magnet that he puts up while they're on the road going all the way to Snake Ranch <laughs> And he's, I know, he's just putting up all the gags uh, on all the other drivers. Yeah. Anyway, when Pee Wee was now at the snake ranch, because he hates snakes and he didn't want to go, he looked at the entire exhibit until a real life cobra had uh, followed on his path and he screams like a girl as he finally t has taken another bus just to head straight east. But then he soon uh, winds up at a local farm that's owned by farmer, along with his farmer daughters, who just uh, had gave him some food and had to stay over for a while, but had warned him not to hang around all of his daughters. But nevertheless, his daughters started uh, following him every chance he got until he tries to escape. So then the next day, his plan was to take him to a wedding chapel, only to find out that he's actually getting married to one of the daughters. Yeah, and I know, since that didn't work out, he decided to escape by putting up in his disguise, dressing up as a cowboy, and continues to go on his next journey, going to another bus, which turned out to be <laughs> a hair salon bus, where they just... Uh, all four of them had uh, created their own hairstyle that's a map of the United States of America. So then Pee Wee decided to have his hair do, which is a helicopter, and then he continues to go on, such as meeting a female pilot who he just jumped off and he landed all the way down to the Amish community where he started to play his. Uh, balloon tunes, sort of like uh, a long version of Jingle Bells and all that. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta admit, that was the best bit. Until he finally made it all on his way, you know, having to go for all this trouble to go to New York, just when he was trying to go into um, Joe McInerney's um, penthouse apartment, because that's where he lives, he suddenly fell into the well and spent the entire day and night in there screaming for help. So it's up for Joe McInerney to show up just to get him out of the well and finally spend their time having the best birthday party ever. So that's what the movie was all about. And I gotta say, it was a fun and entertaining flick. It was just like PB's Big Adventure, only it was quite different. I mean, sure, maybe all these memorable scenes that they put in the film isn't quite on top of the other f scenes that they had in Big Adventure, such as the Alamo, the big bar fight scene, and, of course, the driving feeder scene, you know, with uh, his girlfriend Dottie and all the others that went into it. But this movie had some great funny scenes, uh, most of which were hilarious. Uh, I really did enjoy how how Pee Wee had to go through all this trouble just to get there. It seems like it was a reminisce to it. Even though it did have a mix of CGI with some practical effects. I mean shots of when he was down in the well he actually uh, <laughs> he actually dreamed that uh, he spotted Abraham Lincoln 
uh, Queen Elizabeth, and yeah, even himself as the devil. So <laughs> I guess it's sort of like a reminiscence to when he was in a truck driving scene where a truck driver, who's a woman, actually shows her scary face. Yeah, which was done with claymation. And I never forget that scene where when he was with the female pilot, you know, they were about to go all the way. Uh, she just gave him some sandwiches with garnish. You know, it's an orange peel. And he started to love it. Then she just dropped off using her parachute while PB just jump off with the umbrella. He tries to go down, but <laughs> just he just keeps on falling. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of like a take on Mary Poppins, but I knew it didn't work. <laughs> oh, man. It definitely has a beautiful location, because I know Fairview in the original film was shot in Burbank. That was Tim Burton's hometown. Yeah, at the time. And it was actually shot at the Golden Mall, which is now the downtown Burbank. Because they already have a shopping center called... Urban Town Center. Yeah, that's a that's a shopping mall. So I know they shot this movie at a studio and maybe at a different location in California. While the rest of it is just shot in in New York and was all the other areas that they had, but either way, it was cool. Had a great cast besides Joe McEnero. There was Tara Buck and all the other actors. I have to admit though, the bank robbers were pretty hot and sexy. Having to see all three of them, you know, kidnapping the Pee Wee Herman was just was just really something, something I never thought I would see in a Pee Wee movie, but they know they were going for adult humor. And yeah, there was a lot of funny moments in there and a lot of funny lines. But nevertheless, it was cool to see Pee Wee Herman back on screen again. He hasn't changed a bit. He looks pretty much the same as he once was, except slightly older. Because I know Paul Rubens is already in his 60s. But he has his makeup and his haircut and his suit, so he looks pretty much like how he was back in the 80s, you know, when he was very young. I mean, his voice did sound a little raspy when he was doing some of his acts here, but it followed, so it was cool. I'm just glad to see that he finally got a new movie that I really enjoy. I mean, being 30 years old, <laughs> I waited so long to see this movie back in action, even though it aired on Netflix. So, now I know kids today will probably won't understand Pee Wee. But I guess once you watch all of his films and maybe the his stand-up back, I think people will definitely give him a chance. So if you ever do, definitely watch him. I mean, he'll definitely tick you your funny bone. So if you have Netflix, check out PB's Big Holiday. Because if you're a big fan of PB's Big Adventure as well as Big Top PB, you'll really enjoy this film. I highly recommend it. So anyway, I give Pee-wee's Big Holiday five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.